So welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm Marcelo, and I'll be talking about performance tips uh, related to FastAPI. Uh, before we start, uh, who I know here, just like who talked to me the last days, just for me to, you, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, thank you, gracias. Okay, so it's just for, uh, for me to focus on, like, look to the specific people, <laughs> it helps me. Uh, it's not, like, I don't know how to do it here. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I see. Now it's much better. <laughs> That's the guy. Uh, okay, so anyway, um, uh, yeah, this is me. Uh, okay, so this is me again. Uh, I am, I've been helping on Fast API for three years by now. Uh, I've started just helping on GitHub issues and stuff. Uh, wrote some pull requests, but I mainly help on. Um, uh, managing kind of the project with Sebastian kind of thing, uh, help him uh, a lot, but that's, I think, what I do there. And I'm also a maintainer of YouthCorn and Starlet. Uh, YouthCorn is, uh, well, if you were here in the room before, <laughs> you know. But anyway, so YouthCorn is a web server implementation that runs uh, applications like uh, FastAPI, uh, like FastAPI, and also Starlet. Starlet is a web framework that provides, it's one of the dependencies of FastAPI, so it provides the web capabilities uh, for FastAPI. Uh, I'm also recently joined uh, Pydentic. Uh, who here knows about Pydentic? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Cool. Uh, yeah, so we just released uh, the version v2 some days ago. Uh, people were really excited about it. Uh, we are really excited about it. Uh, underneath, it uses Rust to do all the validation and creating of the schema. So uh, try it. It's, uh, it's, I don't know if my boss is watching me, but hi, boss. <laughs> uh, anyway, and we just created a company. So, uh, and we are kind of looking for uh, people to understand kind of uh, what's wanted. Uh, so we have this blog post, uh, pydentic.dev slash roadmap, uh, where we explain things that we want to build and we would want uh, your feedback. Uh, well, since it's a data validation uh, coursing and parsing tool, uh, I put that specifically like data people, data engineers and uh, data science, uh, we'd really appreciate your help. And uh, we also are interested in talking to you. So reach me after the talk if you're also interested. Uh, besides that, uh, yeah, so we'll be talking about performance tips. So here is going to be something like uh, small things that you can do to improve the, perfor improve the performance. The way this talk's going to be is like, um, I'm going to have this base application, which might not represent what you'd have on production, but it's the one that I, uh, that I thought at the moment that I saw on the day that I was creating this talk. So that's the one that I'm going to use, which is this one. So as I said, it might not represent a user's uh, case, like real case, but uh, so you see uh, that I have from uh, on line three and four, I generate uh, schemas and I use some data, which I'm not gonna show here, but I've created that with uh, something that I'm gonna show on the next slide. And on line from nine to 11, I just have uh, an endpoint, which I am purposely uh, creating some Pydentic models on line 11 and then returning that for, for the fast API, like for the, for the client. Uh, yep, so this is the base application that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna show the improvements and I'm gonna compare always to this one. Uh, yep, so let's go. Uh, I'm gonna be using the version 0 0.98 because uh, the, last, the, the last version of fast API already is using Pydentic v2. So at the end I'm gonna show the, the how it improves the performance using uh, V2. Uh, yeah, but if you install like, like Fast API without the, the version pinning, today you would already have the, the V2 Pydentic installed. Uh, anyway, so I generated the, the data from those two tools, JSON Generator and JSON to, Py, to Pydentic. Uh, really nice tools. And yeah, so the first thing that I'm gonna say is about uh, the event loop that we're gonna use when uh, we are using uh, 
well, when they're building an application. And usually people uh, tend to, like, they believe <laughs> that just installing Youthcorn, you will have already the benefits of uh, the most performatic setup, which is not true. And uh, so Youthcorn, it supports, but yeah. It supports by default uh, uh, async I/O, so you need to set up UVLOOP if you want uh, to use it, which is another uh, event loop implementation. And uh, you can see also the how it performs compared to the other uh, implementations. That's nice. Um, what else? Um, yeah. So if you just install it, then you're gonna have uh, an increase of 10% of. Uh, Performance. Uh, ah, yeah, this is important. I run the the benchmarks on my local machine, and uh, they are going to be available. Uh, like I'm gonna make the slides and the with the tests I used. Uh, I don't know on the Discord server. Uh, but this is just I want you to see the numbers just as a comparative measure, not exactly to look at the the number itself. So you just consider that there is an improvement here, please. Uh, yeah. So. If you just install it, uh, Youthcorn is already going to use it. So if it's in the virtual environment, you already have this uh, this benefit. Another thing that can be improved uh, is using HTTP tools. So by default, uh, Youthcorn uses uh, H11, H11, I don't know, uh, which is a Sans IO uh, HTTP parser, which was also here in the previous talk. Like. Tom showed that, uh, uh, and it's the default. I don't know what's the default. Actually. Well, I don't know why is the reason this is the default. I think it was because it was the first one implemented, um, and then HTTP tools is an HTTP parser that works with callbacks, and it is faster than uh, H11 because H11 is pure Python, and yeah, it's pure Python. And HTTP tools, it's building in C, and then there is you have the the binding. What it says there is that it's a binding that Node.js also uses. So this, there is a binding for Node.js as well, for JavaScript. Um, yeah. So that's the same thing. You kind of have 10% of improvement. Uh, same idea. You should look at this as there is an improvement, and uh, you also benefit from it if you just uh, install it. So if it's available in the virtual environment, UVCorn is going to use it, and you already have the benefit. Uh, yep. So this is, uh, is Alex here? Which one? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 the NEIO. Are you here? OK, he's not here. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, yeah, so this is another application. This is not part, or, or do I have? Ah, yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, so this is an application that uh, at startup is going to increase the number of tokens. Uh, and those tokens are the number of threads that you can use. So if you notice online, uh, like, the like the threads that the security can use. So if you notice online 17, we have a dev instead of an async dev, so which means that fast API well, Starlet uh, is going to run this in an uh, uh, executor. And uh, you can define the number of threads that you have available for that. So for example, if um, by default, you have a number of total tokens being 40. So which means that if you, like right now, you send 100 requests for this application, uh, it's going to run 40. Then when one thread is available, then it's going to start running the, the others, because uh, you have a limit. And this is something that a lot of people don't know, and we're trying to improve how to, uh, how to customize this. But right now, it is like this. So it, you get the, default, uh, the current default thread limiter, and then you change the number of tokens. Uh, that is, uh, so by mistake, of my mistake, I think the, uh, the low cost uh, script that I used I didn't do a good job on the, on the, like how I set up, because otherwise you'd have far more improvement because it depends on how many requests you are like filling the 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 number of threads. So <laughs> I think I didn't get that right. But anyway, it's um, if the number of requests is more than the number of threads that you have at the same time, like then you're gonna need uh, a bigger thread pool and you're gonna see more improvement than this. 
but that is an improvement. Again, you should look at this as that is an improvement. Um, another thing is uh, on this example, uh, um, this is pretty much the same example as the, the first one that we started. I'm just adding the async uh, keyword on line 10. And so which means that I'm not using the executor to uh, to execute. <laughs> uh, I'm just using uh, async tasks. And here, just because of that, I have I don't have the overhead of those threads, and then I have the 50% improvement. Again, just that is an improvement. Uh, focus on that. And yep. So my example was kind of, as I said, not kind of real, kind of. Uh, but actually, it was took from uh, more than one uh, code source. So I've seen that in some places, which people usually create the model before you send them back to, to FastAPI. And what happens is that FastAPI makes sure that uh, the response model is the, it's actually validated, because you can actually modify the the attributes uh, of the of the models that you have uh, on the endpoints. So the idea here is that you always like you're going to be sure FastAPI is going to make sure that you have the data uh, all right before sending back to the client. Uh, well, there are some people that are a bit unsatisfied with this behavior because uh, they say that if I already have the output model, why should I? Why FastAPI should revalidate again? Uh, and that's something that uh, is going to be addressed, kind of. It's going to be optional at some point, uh, but it is not right now. And on this case, well, since it's heavily, uh, like the application that we have is mainly, like we're <laughs> validating the models, like uh, very CPU bound, I'd say, uh, then when we remove one of the layers of the validation, then we're going to have a 25% improvement. Um, and then, which means that only fast API is doing the validation internally. Uh, this is, oh, okay, fast API went on the other line. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is um, also, uh, well, this is just changes one line, right? On the line eight, which should be line seven, uh, I'm adding the default response class, which we use uh, ORJSON. As uh, uh, to serialize the response, uh, yeah. So this is not something that we're gonna have a huge improvement because right now what's happening is that on line 12 we're gonna we're gonna validate the models online and then on line 10 internally we're gonna revalidate those models so we're creating them again. Uh, so that's the huge stuff that's happening here. And then you you're gonna use the RJs and just to serialize and send to the to the client. And then we just, well, with this application that I have, I have a 5% of improvement. But again, you should look at this as there is an improvement. Um, yeah. Without validation, uh, since everything that I did, like making sure that my data is the one, like, is the one that I want to be, uh, I don't have that, then I would have. Um, 150% of improvement. So if you don't want to make sure, if you don't want to leverage the capabilities that would likely make you use fast API, then you have a lot of improvement. But I don't recommend. Uh, but anyway, at the end, I'm going to show you uh, something interesting. Uh, OK. So you can also do it without logging. This is also something that improves the performance. So, but I guess you also don't want that, I don't know. Uh, so you can not have any access logs and you are going to have 15% uh, of improvement on the application that uh, you just saw with the, with the basic setup uh, on your recording, uh, this setup. And then, yeah, and then without any of the improvements that I told you, and just using Pydentic V2, which means using the latest version of FastAPI, uh, you're gonna have, so you saw that before, you have this without any validation, right? And then right now you're gonna have an improvement of far bigger than, uh, than you saw. But again, uh, is the, 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 the application is heavily 
doing validation twice and stuff. But anyway, there is a huge improvement uh, using only by installing the last, the, the latest fast API. And yeah, there are some bonuses thing. Yeah. So for example, there is there was this command. Uh, Usually, when you create uh, middlewares with uh, FastAPI or, or Starlet, there is uh, an, a structure called uh, base HTTP middleware. That's where you, when you use like uh, app dot and then you put middleware and then HTTP. You know, uh, you are under on on underneath of that you have this base base HTTP middleware uh, class, which is uh, which kind of makes it easier for you to create middlewares but it comes with a cost and historically has been uh, had a lot of bugs so if you use fast api for some time you probably face some of the bugs the 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 most common one lately was the that if you have a background task and if you have a mid, a base http middleware then uh, you could only have uh, one request in a single what how is it so if you had two requests on the single connection the background task will block the next one. So I had one request which will create a background task, and then if I like sleep in 10 second, seconds, then the next request is gonna wait ten, those 10 seconds, and then it's gonna, it's gonna run. Uh, but that was solved in the latest uh, Starlet. Um, and it's important, so Fast API doesn't have the latest Starlet, so that bug is already, <laughs> it's currently happening. So uh, that's a good reason for not to use right now, but it's gonna be solved on the, on the on the next first API release. Uh, yeah, so you can use this thing called ASCII, pure ASCII middleware. I didn't put the pure. Um, so this is the way you do in fast API. Uh, it's kind of straightforward. So you have on line nine, you call the next, which will be the endpoint uh, with the request. And then on line 10, you are adding this new header, X potato, and then adding the value banana. Uh, but if you want to do it, uh, so as I said, this is pretty simple, straightforward, but it comes with a, a cost, and you could uh, remove that cost with uh, using a base HTTP, sorry, uh, a pure ASCII middleware. So just to explain here, uh, like, it's a bit big, I guess, but uh, the important thing is that on line 10, so this is following the ASCII uh, interface, uh, and then we also have a good tutorial on how to implement this kind of uh, middleware. But yeah, on line 10 uh, and 11, I am just making sure that I have uh, an HTTP request. Uh, there are other types of scopes that I can use to create middlewares, uh, but I'm interested on <laughs> HTTP on this example. Uh, also to make it compatible to what I saw, what we saw on the last slide. And then on the send uh, coroutine, we are just making sure that we are adding this new uh, header. We are using mutable headers, which is a data, data structure from Starlet. Makes it easy, it, it helps a bit in creating those kind of middlewares. Uh, so we are leveraging that. And then on line uh, 16, we are just adding those, that header. Um, yeah, so those two, this one, and this one, they are analogous, this one, uh, performs much better because that is, uh, it doesn't make it easy for you to implement it, but uh, it's faster. Uh, so yeah, you can read about it on starlet.io slash middleware. have a section called uh, ASCII Pure Middleware. It was written partially by me and the other part by Fleur Rimon. I, I forgot his name, if he's watching, sorry. Uh, but he's really nice and he writes stuff very, very well. Uh, so I recommend like if you just like if you are using fast API, I would recommend this anyway because you learn about uh, uh, what ASCII stuff. And you can also use uh, some middlewares uh, for compressing the responses. One of those is already in fast API uh, and Starlet, which is the gzip 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 middleware. Uh, but this is like a bonus because uh, on the application that we had, it doesn't uh, make it perform better. Uh, so it depends on the on the 
on the response on the body of the response that we'd have. Uh, so in the case of the application that I had, it didn't uh, went better. You also have another one, the Brotly, Brotly, uh, something like that, middleware, um, but it's an external package that can also be used uh, analog analogously as this one. And what else? Yeah, just that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>as I said, I intentionally said many times that to not focus on the percentage because uh, I just wanted to see an improvement. And well, not, not like that. Like, there is an improvement. I'm going to share it after. It's going to be better. But what's the formula, basically? I'm not like, in the, like, what do you put on the denominator, know, denominator? That's uh, uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's literally this, so. <laughs> Did you get it? I'm, uh, no, but, uh, I will follow up. Uh, this is, this is not something that I come up with, like, my, I saw it in a blog post and then I use it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, hi, thank you for your talk. Um, sometimes it's not very uh, clear uh, what to try to optimize. So uh, profiling can help. And uh, do you have any recommendations for how to profile uh, when developing a fast API application? Or should we just use our regular profilers for that? Thank you. Mm. I think regular, like I, I usually use the, the cute one, the new one. Uh, memory Ray, memory Ray, something like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, I don't do anything different than that. Uh, there is the flag thing. Uh, I forgot the flag. To make sure that you are not blocking the event loop. I forgot the name of the flag. Uh, but that's the, the only thing that I do. Yep. Hi, Marcello. Thanks for the Ciao. talk. You had this insane improvement of 265% using the latest version. Is that related to Pydantic going rust? Or uh, has it other reasons? Yeah, reverse? yeah, yeah. But you need, like, I specifically mentioned that uh, that the application that I used was mainly doing validation, mm -hmm. and it was doing it twice. So it kind of, if uh, if that was the main goal of the application, that you'd obviously have a huge performance on, on the change of the Pydentic version. Yes. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you. thank you for your talk. Um, when you were using the JSON serializer, is there any drawback there? Is it or is it just literally free? Free launch. Like, uh, I didn't get the question. So, Sorry. do I need to do anything else anywhere in my application to 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 to, to use the JSON serializer, or is just plug it in and we'll? You mean the R JSON thing? Yeah. E, yeah, but also you probably don't want to use it anymore, <laughs> because Pydantic is faster anyway, right now. Like on, with Pydantic v2, uh, it's gonna be faster to use it uh, to serialize than to use R JSON. I don't, uh, I'm not even sure if it's, I, I need to check that, but I'm not even sure if it, al well, it allows you because you can change the response class, so you can use our JSON if you want, but I think internally is using uh, the Pydantic JSON uh, serializer, so, and it performs better than our JSON, so that's a tip that was from before the, the latest version of FastAPI. All right, thanks. OK. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs>